Hi, it's Mike again with Utastic here at SCNA. Now I'm sitting down with Justin Searles, uh, co-founder of Test Double. Uh, Justin is, uh, speaks at a lot of conferences and talks about testing, but what we're mostly talking about today is you wrote this very interesting uh, article not that long ago about single purpose, single focus user groups and, and communities are kind of a dead end, that the future is really in general purpose. Can you describe a little bit about what you meant by that article? Well, there's two major points. One is that, obviously, like, and if you're watching this, you're probably familiar with user groups. In most communities, in most locales, the user groups are divided up by the um, uh, either the server-side stack frameworks that people use or the languages that people predominantly identify as, I'm a Ruby developer, I'm a .NET developer, I'm a C-sharp developer, I'm a Java developer. Uh, I'm a I'm an iPhone developer, right. and so I go or a JavaScript developer, and I go. I am a right, and so we you know in, I live in Columbus. So in Columbus we have Cbus JS, we have Columbus Ruby Brigade, we've got I'm sure we've got a .NET group that I don't right. attend. We've got um, uh, an NS Coder night for 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 Coco and uh, right. Objective C for, developers, for and ten apps and. Uh, Rather, I, I just think it's a poor abstraction. So if you're a developer, you're familiar with designing abstractions that model something in a right. way that is uh, going to you know, maximize reuse or, or, or just help us communicate efficiently. And I think it's a poor abstraction because regardless of what language you're writing, you're probably solving the same kind of right. problem very frequently. And maybe the tools change a little bit or maybe the syntax changes. Uh, but, but, but why, uh, uh, why redundantly have the same talk or the same mm -hmm. solution broached in all those different dialects when we could simply come together as one group yeah. and either focus on just find a new way to slice it. Like one way to slice it might be uh, by problem, right? So like we build web applications or right. we are, are like an embedded hardware. So group. problem domains, mm -hmm. not specifically I write .NET apps because even then that's that's too vague. It's right. Do you write for the mobile? Do you write for So the that identifies tribes, not yeah. you know any sort of like um, uh, specific passion or interest that, that people might have. And that's one big piece. The other is that um, uh, life changes and and some of these groups have actually kind of evolved beyond themselves. Where like I go to a Ruby user group and I see so many people talking about, um, you know, maybe they diverge. Some people are really into Erlang and, and um, uh, other languages at this point. Right. And other people are all about front-end development. So there's lots of talks about, you know, CoffeeScript and JavaScript testing and stuff like right. that, all in the ostensibly Ruby user group. Um, because it's really easy to start up a new one, uh, and, and because typically, like, it's easy to get the word out with Twitter now, uh, right. as opposed to traditional means, I'm all for killing user groups, right? right. Like, like let's let's spin one up. Like, for instance, I talked in my uh, talk today a lot about growing object-oriented software guided right. by tests. That's a fantastic book, but it's a very meaty, dense book. And I've been toying with the idea for a couple of years now of just doing like a nine-part lecture series, right? And have that be a user group and look and feel and be just like a user group. But then that it will end, right. and and everyone will go and then do something else, and it'll free up one of the nights of the week for yeah. some other group to to emerge. So it's more like. Uh, um, I, I would say, I'd say more like a training course, though. They would, they would feel more like we're going to do a study group that has... A or, yeah, study group is a good word for it. I use that one, too. I mean, like, um, not, not to say that that's what I think they should be, mm -hmm. but if we uh, relax this assumption that a user group's purpose in life is to be a self-perpetuating organization, mm -hmm. we can experiment and try new things, and even if we presume the conclusion, we know that things are going to you know, eventually end, uh, we can just experiment with different styles that are appropriate to what we hope to accomplish with that group. How, how in that case, though, do you reach out to people and, and maintain a continuity? Uh, one of the, the aspects of, of, of user community is the word community. Uh, right. If it's just a short-lived thing, how do you maintain a continuity? Well, one of the things I've observed in Columbus, and it might be a function of the size, Columbus is like the perfectly sized city because of the people, there's two and a half million people in the metro area, but of the people who are engaged in the software industry, enough to like show up to some place after work. Right. It's the same, you know, couple hundred folks who, who, who either go to lots of different user right. groups or have one home base that they go to. And we had these silos where, you know, um, I'll pick a random name out of hat. There's a guy named Greg Malcolm in Columbus who I don't think I've ever gone to a user group in Columbus where he wasn't there. Right. But he goes to all of them. And he is the glue that everyone happens to know across all these disparate communities. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's a really inefficient communication mechanism, but it exists. 
I would much rather uh, than have the asylos just have a, an acknowledgement that there was these 200 people and we all kind of sort of know each other. Yeah. And get together for big social outings just to inter intermingle and let, let this stuff emerge. So you don't think that having a specific group is what keeps people together, but these are people already inclined oh, yeah. Yeah. To, to gathering. So as long as there's events, these yeah. people are going to find each other. Right. Right? As long as there's a, a local conference or uh, uh, anything to do, like we, we uh, I badgered uh, Jason Long at GitHub to do a drink up. Right. Because uh, I wanted to meet more designers. Right. You know, in my particular circle, I don't see designers very often. So I said, hey, Jason, let's do another Columbus drink up, intentionally invite designers, and then, of course, all the developers will come. And it was right. this big, wonderful outing, and we got to meet lots of people across these, you know, party lines of... Well, yeah, so so uh, GitHub, which is basically if they if they blank, there there be forty developers there. Well, if it's free alcohol, <laughs> well, that doesn't more like that doesn't hurt. Yeah, but it, but the point is is that in order to, you were able to take something where uh, developers will already pay attention to this one aspect of of one aspect in the community, go to there, and by having that one focal point pull in another community, they were able to connect two communities yep, together yep, absolutely. and get some nice cross-pollination. And, 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 and that's why I think that, like, um, and I think in the blog post I might have said this, that um, language-oriented or lang like organizing uh, user groups by language can be very harmful because when it stagnates, people become less engaged. So you hear these people who started off as being highly engaged individuals, then they go to one or two user groups for, for 10, 15, 20 years. There's a lot of Java user groups now that have been around forever. Right. And... Uh, uh, once that gets stale, the person's, you know, even if they keep going, they're sort of like just, uh, it's another mechanical thing to do and there's like a lot less, you know, interesting cross-pollination and, and infusion of new ideas. Yeah. It's just, it's like, it's like an anachronism. It's like the, you know, uh, uh, like a, what would you call it, like a Shriners Club meeting or something like right. that where it's like this like secret society. It's yeah, just, it's, it's the jobbers. Right, right. People who had something in common 20 years ago and then just sort of like came to coalesce into like a small little group of, you know, people who know each other really well over right. a long period of time. And that, there's nothing wrong with that, but I would much rather um, spend the time that I spend after work in a, in a forum that I'm going to either be able to share a lot at a really uh, high bang per buck, you know, uh, frequency or learn a lot you know, from a lot of different people all at once. So it sounds like there's kind of some different patterns. One is the long-lived, closely-knit, tight uh, community, and then there's the more dynamic, hey, let's get together and just share and learn, and, you know, if you come, that's cool. If you don't come, that's cool, but we're going to share neat stuff. Yeah. And a little bit less uh, tight-knit, maybe smaller friendships inside of that community, but a little bit more uh, high energy. And there's no one right way of you know, meeting. Like yeah. I think that having big mixer kind of events is great to kind of just you know uh, uh, stoke the coals and get people all in one place. Mm -hmm. And hopefully as an outflow of that, give folks tools to, uh, or encourage folks to, um, or just let naturally occur, people coalesce and, 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 and attract and, 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 and so forth yeah. uh, into finding things. And, and one of the, the interesting things when you talked about that one person that you see going to everything. Yeah. It, it, it's very much... Sorry, uh, Greg. <laughs> no, it's... it's uh, yesterday, I talked to Patrick Walsh, mm. and he talked about the concept of a, a network weaver. Yes. And it's a person who... He's comes, got that on business cards. Yeah. yeah. But but it's the idea is, is that it's one person that can go between these different communities. You even described it as maybe uh, an inefficient way of communicating between different groups. But you see this one guy, he goes to the Python. Yeah, it's a, it's a ring network, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he, but he can, he can be the one person that shares information and lets people know, hey, last month uh, they talked about mm -hmm. testing in, in this month at, at, at the Python group, and this month we're talking about testing at Ruby. Well, this is something I learned there, and then it's able to transport those ideas mm -hmm. In, in, in a fashion over to that. Um, yeah, absolutely. And it shouldn't be just one guy's job to do that right. because it's not a reliable, durable system. I think it, uh, uh, we should be thinking about how we can uh, proliferate good ideas and, and let them win in the marketplace of you know this precious time that we all have. Right. Uh, and uh, you know discourage stale ideas from becoming you know rotely kind of like preached over and over again. I was at. Um, I've been to a Java user group in the past where the talk, and, 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 and uh, I'm not selling, but you know, bless his heart. Yeah. The, the guy giving the talk uh, uh, was just sharing ideas and technologies that were very old and, and, and outmoded, in my opinion, right. and 
uh, that group would have been much better served at, at you know, a, a, literally a user group that was happening the same night on the other, other side of town. Right. And uh, uh, I would like to f try to think about or have people who are like, you know, passionate about user groups is like, how do we uh, discourage the, 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 the groups that become stale or the talks right. that become stale or the ideas that are stale uh, and, and encourage the ones that are fresh? Because it's always easier for the entrenched interests, mm -hmm. like the, the long running groups to keep going. It's much harder to start something new. Right. If you make it cheaper to start something new, maybe it'll work out. One thing though is, is it, I, I've looked at this in, in my own experience uh, running a group is uh, a lot of groups still, and, and you talk about the new, it's always the new ideas. We, I, I don't know if it's, if stale, I mean, there, I know what you mean in the context of stale. And, and, and the way I understand it is that stale is, these are ideas that have been shared over and over and over again. Maybe some of them have been, been outdated yeah. or, or superseded, but uh, there's also old ideas that get forgotten. Oh, and sure. don't aren't brought forward and and shared again with the new. Uh, have you seen anything uh, in the groups you've gone to where they've looked backwards? Oh, absolutely. So um, you know, like in my talk today, for instance, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm talking about growing object oriented software guided by test, which is a book right. that was, I think, initially published in the uh, 2005 2006. Okay, so a little bit. So, back. But so, I mean, I'm talking back to the 60s. Yeah, yeah, sure. And so there's like you know, I would love to see a small group that was just a interesting papers from the history of computer science, right. you know, group. Um, that got together every quarter or something. Like Jim Wyrick at the Ruby User Brigade in Columbus uh, uh, last year, two years ago, he gave a talk of like uh, uh, 10 of the greatest computer science papers in 60 minutes. Oh, really? Right. And he goes through each of them and makes the argument and does as much as he could possibly do until his timer runs out and then he goes on to the next paper. And, and uh, yeah, I see that every now and then. I think that oftentimes what, what happens much more organically right. is an idea is stale. We successfully stopped talking about it for a few years. And then somebody brings it up again because it's new to them because they haven't seen right. it. Right. And, and, and so if it's a good idea, it'll keep coming back up. Yeah, it'd be nice to be able to say this one's deprecated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to no. sit down. No, thank appreciate you, Michael. It. I appreciate it.